Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Mac Minute. This is a show that we have developed to provide you a Mac tip in a minute a week. And our, this whole came, from this today's not going to be a minute, just so you know. Today's going to be a little bit longer than a minute because we're going to describe the show a little bit. And then we're going to go in a little bit more depth with a couple of options to get past some of the most frustrating things for a new user. And it's not going to be very long, but it's going to be a little longer than a minute today. So the show came from the fact that I was has some family members who've recently switched over to a Mac, which um, boy, I'm a I'm not a Mac fanboy, but I'm a Mac fan. Actually, I'm a fan of all technology, but I do prefer to use Macs as much as possible over other operating systems, with the exception of maybe Linux, but that's more server-based stuff. So, anyways, my some of my family members got a Mac, and they were really having their trouble, you know, converting from the, a PC over, and they're not very technical, so they're more used to. Uh, knowing it or doing it by repetition. So there were some differences. And I came up with the idea of creating a show where a minute a week you can get a new tip and begin to learn the Mac over time. When What I tried to do initially here is try to avoid some of the most obvious frustrations people who convert, which is what we're going to do today. So that's what this show is all about. It will be close to a minute of content every week with the exception of today. So. Here on the, on the screen right here, you see I have a Mac. I have a laptop sitting right here in front of me, and I've created a new user. So this is how your machine would look when you first get it home and, and get it set up. And a couple of things uh, I want to go through and change uh, right away, but I want to give you a real quick overview of some of the differences, which you've probably figured out by now, but I still want to want to start from, from scratch. One of the things you're going to notice is there is no start menu here in a Mac. And in fact, if you, the menu bar is at the top versus being at the bottom where the start is. And there's not really, there's a clock and everything at the top as well, but you still have the same kind of status bar as you do in Windows. So that's kind of missing. And that confuses people a lot. Now, there's a couple of things. If you want to get to your applications, one of the things you can do is you can go to Launchpad, which is, is a new thing in Lion or Mountain Lion. And it looks more like an iPad. So if you have an iPad, you're going to be very used to this type of look. And you can easily scroll between all your different applications. And you can click on them. You can create groups in here, just like you do on an iPad. So if you have an iPad or an iPhone, this is going to be probably your most comfortable place to start. For me, I've been using this for so long, this actually isn't very comfortable for me. I'm, I'm faster in other ways, which I'm going to demonstrate some of those ways, because they're closer to Windows. Uh, way of doing things. So let's go ahead and get out of this. This is called Launchpad, by the way. And there is a function key on your desktop uh, for it. It's typically F4, or what says F4 on it. Um, we'll bring that up. And it's, it depends on your version of your Mac and keyboard configuration and stuff like that. But there's typically a button for that, on, especially on the newer Macs. They all have it on the newer Macs. So next to Launchpad is this little smiley face down here. It's called a Finder. And this is as close as you can get by default to the equivalent of looking on my computer. You bring it up, you see your different folders and such over here. Let me get that out if you can see it. You see all your different folders over here. And you can click on them and you can go, you want to see the applications. There's a list of all the applications that are on your Mac, et cetera. So I'm going to give you what I think is the better way to do this in a little bit, because by default it's not turned on. So we're going to go fix that as well. And it'll be more like having the My Computer icon on your desktop. So. First thing you want to do is go into the system preferences, which on a Mac is not under control panel. It's actually under the Apple menu, and you go to system preferences. And I'm using a mouse to do this. I'm also going to use a trackpad here and show you something with the trackpad. But the first thing you want to do when you get this is probably go to mouse because there's some things in here that aren't turn, are turned off by default. So let's get this up here where you can see it. And we're going to go into the mouse option. The most obvious thing that's turned off for the mouse is secondary click. You'll notice if I come over here on the desktop and I right click, nothing happens. But Macs do have right clicks. They've had right clicks for a long time. In fact, they've had right clicks before there were right clicks on the mice. You could do it by, you can, you can still do this by holding the control key down and left clicking, you can get the right click menu. So they've had the ability to do um, secondary clicks for a long time. So. The easy fix is to turn it on. Why it's turned off, I do not know. So we turn it on, and if I go right click, it's working now. So that's an easy fix for the, mi the mouse. That's one of the uh, most frustrating things when you come from Windows, you're used to right click on things. It's there, just not turned on. So let's go turn that on. Next is this scroll direction. And this is backwards. If you use a mouse 
on a Windows machine, when you scroll this way with your mouse, you expect the pages to go down. You scroll this way, you expect the pages to go up. Well, when it's turned into natural mode, it's the opposite of that. It, it works more like a touch, like your finger's on the sheet of paper and moving it. So when you scroll up, instead of scrolling the page up, it scrolls up the whole thing. It goes the opposite direction of what you would think. This is by default turned on now in the new Mac OS, uh, OS 10 Lion Mountain Lion. And it shouldn't be. If people, this is very frustrating for people. It they, they takes them forever to get used to it. And then if, they, if you go back and forth between a PC and a, if say you're on a Mac at home and a PC at work or vice versa, you're not going to be, you're going to get frustrated. So best thing you can say is turn that off and it'll scroll like what you're used to coming from a PC or Unix or whatever else you're using. So that's it for the mouse. Now, and the next thing I want to do is go, I'm on a laptop, so I'm going to cover this. We're going to go back and we're going to go to one level and we're going to go to trackpad because the same thing happens in trackpad. One of the things with the trackpad, by default, you actually, on the Macs, you actually physically push in and you hear a click. And that is pushing the mouse button. But I'm, if you're coming from a Windows uh, background, you can typically just tap on the pad instead of having to hit the button. So by default, again, it's turned off in here. Again, my preference is to have it turned on because I do this on all kinds of devices, not just the Mac, and it's just the way I'm used to working. So I do turn that on. That's really your choice. If you have a bad habit of hitting the bar, hitting the tab, or the trackpad, sorry, trackpad, then you should probably go ahead and turn that off, but I don't have that problem, so I turn it on. It just, it just more, makes more sense for me. The, uh, let's go back here to scroll and zoom, go to the next tab, and we have the exact same problem here, is scroll direction, and it's set to, um, nat it's set to natural by default. I've already unchecked it, I guess. You need to make sure it's unchecked, otherwise you're going to have the exact same problem you had with the mouse scrolling. It's going to seem backward to you. If you're coming from, never had a computer before, and you're coming from a touchpad, like an iPad or an iPhone, something like that, it will make sense to you having it the natural direction. But if you use any other computers, uh, or you're coming from another computer, you need to just make it not natural because it does not make sense. It's, it's backward of what you would think. I've had, I have had people tell me they've turned it on and gotten used to it, those people don't go back and forth between computers like I do. So if you're using more than one computer, I would recommend definitely turning that feature off. All right, that's all we're going to do right now. The, the frustrating thing for the track, for the, the uh, mice. The other thing I want to do is I want to turn some things, other things on. So we're going to get out of that and we've got to click on the desktop and we want to go to Finder. And under Finder, you'll see this option right here. Let me get out of the way. Right here and it says Preferences. So we're going to bring up Preferences, and with Preferences, there's a couple of things we can do to the desktop. First of all, you notice there is no hard drive, and I mentioned before, the Finder is the best way to get there. But it doesn't get you to the actual hard disk. It tries to keep you from that. Uh, and it is a little dangerous sometimes, but it's easier for a lot of people just that are used to getting to that way to turn that on. So what we're going to do is we're going to check this box, and you see all of a sudden on the desktop, I have my hard drive. I can double click on it. There's all my folders. And you see all my sidebar stuff, which we're going to do next. So let's get back into Finder Preferences. The sidebar is nice, but it's missing a few things. Uh, to me, it's missing some of the most important things, actually. If I want to get to my machine, or I can't use sidebar, I have to use the desktop. I can come down here and say, I want to see my machine, or my home folder, basically the equivalent of my documents um, in Windows. Now it's here. I just added it, and it shows up right here at the bottom. You can see right here. So turning that off was hiding that. So I couldn't get to that easily. I could see my stuff, but I couldn't get to like my stuff at the base, the, the root level. So we wanted to fix that. The other thing that it does not put on here is the actual physical device, which this is the equivalent of the hard drive icon on the desktop. You'll notice it's not in here. If I scroll down to devices, I see remote disk, which uh, is another computer in here that has the CD software on it that I can do remote burns with. If I check this box, you now see I can get to my hard drive just like I could from the desktop. So it's the same thing as the desktop icon, but one level up. So you can see network and hard drive. So here's the hard drive. There's the same thing as going into my computer. So you can see that's something that's important, especially for people who uh, are used to doing it that way in Windows. And so many people have are used to that because that's the way you used to have to do it in the older versions of Windows. So if you grew up with Windows, you're used to having this. And not having it would actually, would actually frustrate you uh, more than, than anything else. So that's what we're trying to fix. 
So those are the very quick things that typically frustrate a new user and um, majorly frustrate, especially with the mouse being backwards and uh, no right clicks that go away, things like that. Nobody knows that to right click you have to hold the control key down because they didn't have to do that before. Uh, well, we can turn that right click on and problem solved. So that's kind of all I wanted to cover for this week. I know it's been much more than a minute, but I wanted to get past these very frustrating things in the very beginning. Uh, and then from here on, we have lots of other things to cover. Uh, going over my list right here, we um, some uh, killing a process is next week, something that's stuck because it does happen some, from time to time. Switching applications, fast application switching. Uh, some things are hidden now in iOS uh, 10 Mountain Lion. And we're going to talk about that, which is, again, something I'm not quite sure what the purpose behind it was. Uh, but, for example, like save as doesn't, doesn't show up unless you hold down the option key, things like that. We're going to go through all these in detail. Uh, one minute a week. I promise no long ones like this one. This will be the absolute longest one. If you are watching, uh, you yeah, know, you're not watching it live because this is our first one and we're, we're, we are streaming it live, but nobody knows we're doing it because we haven't told anybody. We do not have a regular night or day to schedule these recordings, we just do them when we can. Uh, sometimes we'll do two in a day and so on. Today we're doing two, for example. I know that for sure because I'm getting ready to do one next. And so, we, so because of that, we don't we don't broadcast live intentionally. We don't we do broadcast live everything we do, but we do not broadcast. We don't announce it because it's not regularly scheduled. So you're probably watching this on either YouTube or some kind of podcasting or a, a cell phone or a tablet of some kind. Maybe even your home your home computer or whatever. Wherever you're getting it from, like if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get updates. It also helps us you know kind of know how we're doing as far as followers go and stuff. And also if you're watching it via like iTunes podcast, be sure you subscribe. You get the regular updates. If you go to our show page at techzen.tv uh, slash Mac Minute, you can also get other ways of contacting us. Uh, you can send us emails. You can contact us via Skype. We also have a community for the whole TechZen network. And um, there's other options out there too, ways of contact. But I think we can add a Google Voice today. So you can leave us a voicemail if, you want, if you're more comfortable doing voicemails than sending emails. So we won't call you back, but we'll get your message and try to take care of it you know, the best that we can. So, you know, again, come back, watch us next week, get practicing on the Mac. Just remember, it's going to be a little bit frustrating until you get switched over, but I do promise you, after you get switched, you won't go back wherever you came from. They're awesome, awesome machines all the way around. The operating system is, is rock solid, and uh, you're just going to love it to get used to it. It's just a little bit of frustration in the very beginning you have to get used to. All right, thank you very much, and we'll see you again next week.